Creative problem solving. Have you ever faced a challenge that seemed impossible for you to conquer? Well, today I'm gonna to give you some powerful techniques that will not only help you tackle any problem, but will give you confidence because you're going to be tackling these problems with creativity and with innovation. And so your confidence is also going to grow. If that sounds good, stick around. If you're not a subscriber, become one. It's super easy. You hear me say it every time. Click the subscribe button and the bell, and I will be right back. Guild Coaching. More success, less stress. Creative problem solving is different than just regular working through something problem solving. It is all about innovation and creative solutions to the challenges or obstacles that you're facing. I truly believe that by thinking outside the box, instead of just going through the channels that you naturally know, we can find solutions that we never thought possible before. So the first thing that you need to do in order to launch into creative problem solving is to define the problem clearly and early. This really sets the foundation for finding the right solution. So trust me, taking the time to understand the problem thoroughly is going to make a huge difference in your problem solving journey. If you don't understand what is really, really going on or what's needed and even somewhat the why behind it, then you may not be able to pinpoint a reasonable solution. So the second thing that you need is brainstorming. So brainstorming isn't just about sitting there and thinking about it on your own. Actually, I don't want you to do that. It's about generating as many ideas as possible. And if you're only chewing over it in your brain, or some people call it noodling it, then you can't possibly be coming up with new ideas because the only thing that you can think of up here are the possibilities that already exist up here. So during brainstorming sessions, if you're brainstorming by yourself or with others, there are no bad ideas. I was just looking down to, to grab a pen. Always have one of these handy. Uh, always have a pen handy. Always have paper handy. Um, during brainstorming sessions in an office place, I like to get a dry erase marker and have a whiteboard and just write things down. There are no bad ideas. Every idea is top tier because every idea is one step closer to the perfect solution. So you wanna make sure that you brainstorm with curiosity and not judgment. That's why I say there are no bad ideas, but write the stuff down. Now, if you're not brainstorming with a group and you're only brainstorming by yourself, you have to have one of these suckers so that you can write things down. I prefer using a pen instead of typing on a computer because the mechanical process of writing with your hand is going to enact different ideas in your brain. When you're writing it down, you have to think it once and then make the motor skill happen in order to get it down on paper. Then your eyeballs are still working this way in taking the information and that's when your brain can think about the information in a new way. Simply reading something instead of just thinking it over changes the way that your brain processes that information. So if you're going to brainstorm, brainstorm on paper. Mind mapping is another technique that I love using. Mind ma mapping is a fantastic way to organize your thoughts and to visualize the connections between ideas. So also involving a pen and paper, let your ideas flow freely as you create your mind map. I'll just write one idea in the middle of a sheet of paper and I'll put a circle around it. And then I'll kind of, kind of like you're drawing a, drawing a sun. If you're a really little kid, you do a circle and then you do all the rays of the sun. So I'll do one idea in the middle, problem maybe, or the issue that I'm undergoing. And I'll, I'll make those lines from it and then I'll, I'll put anything that comes to my head there and then every single thing becomes a circle with a whole bunch of lines. Um, you can do it like that. You can do it in a more linear format. Mine is a more matrix format. Uh, but just let your ideas flow freely. And again, there are no bad ideas. This process is actually fun. It's actually creative. It's going to get your mind thinking in different ways than you would be if you were just sitting there forcing yourself to just really think about it, think about it, think about it. 
So divergent and convergent thinking is the next skill and tool that I want to talk with you about. Divergent thinking is all about generating multiple solutions while convergent thinking helps us to evaluate and suggest and, and select the best one that's been select, uh, suggested. Uh, balancing those two types of thinking is very, very effective for problem solving. So of course, divergent thinking uh, first generating solutions. You're going to do that through the uh, the noodling, the, the brain mapping. You're going to do it through the brainstorming. Um, but you want a lot of solutions, even solutions that you're never going to use. Sometimes if I'm facilitating a meeting um, where, we're, where our goal is to come up with solutions, uh, the first thing that I do is say, all right, I want everybody to give me a possible solution that's just ridiculous ridiculous like the craziest thing the craziest most outlandish thing just go ahead and spit that out and it really lowers the tension in the room from having to come up with the right solution it just relaxes everybody and everything and it does get some solutions out there even though they're going to be pretty crazy probably nothing that we're going to use comes out of that first round of silly stuff that's put out there but occasionally it does and that's one way to really really help yourself with that divergent thinking so that then your convergent thinking you can come in and you can look at everything that you have you can start to do process of elimination and then choose the best way to move forward you always need to consider alternative perspectives one of the reasons that diversity is such a big topic for office places like why people want a diverse staff is so that alternative perspectives can be there, can be evident, can be present. Um, it's really crucial to consider alternative perspectives. And the one thing that you don't have is alternative perspectives, because again, you only know what you know. Alternative perspectives challenge our assumptions during the problem solving process. So you really, really want, want that. If somebody thinks in a completely different way than you do, even if the, the way that they think is annoying to you, seek it out because that's actually good and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone actually i'll challenge you step out like intend on and insist on stepping out of your comfort zone so that you can explore unconventional solutions you've got to test things uh sometimes prototyping testing um th that's just when you you see if an idea is going to work um maybe your maybe your idea isn't actually practical maybe it's not actually going to work so you need to be able to validate that through trial and error and it's okay if the test doesn't work failure is just one stepping stone to success uh, who was it thomas edison said i haven't failed i've just found ten thousand ways that it won't work so think about it like that that's all about having a healthy mindset about it um, and then you're going to want to also understand your own triggers and your own abilities to handle obstacles. So some common obstacles to create a problem solving are fear of failure. That's big. Resistance to change. That's really big. So by reframing challenge as opportunity and embracing experimentation, we overcome those obstacles. We take the, the scary teeth and fangs out of the fear. <laughs> right and we can unlock our full problem solving potential i was just talking to my daughter yesterday she's teaching some really really small children um, in a couple of different subjects uh, this summer some of her volunteer work and um and one of these one of the kids was really frustrating her and i said well would you like to know what i call an area where somebody's just really terrible and they need to grow and she was like yes and i said i call it a space of growth because just reframing that from you are really terrible at this thing just saying, you know, here's a space of growth. It opens up hope. It opens up potential. It opens up that door for that person to grow. So that's why you want to reframe obstacles as challenges because a challenge can be fun and obstacles hard, but a challenge can be hard, but it can also be really, really rewarding. So these are some powerful techniques to master creative problem solving. I hope that it's been of help to you. If so, Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell before you go so that you know the next time that we drop a video like this to help solve all of your issues and have you live a happy and low stress life. I'll see you soon.